Hi, this is Kim. Um, the Lord's been giving me dreams for several years, probably about the last three or four years. And I've been a little reluctant to put them on YouTube, maybe thinking they were just for me or, um, you know, not not having a quiet moment. I have, I have eight kids, so finding a quiet moment is almost impossible. Um, but as time has went on, I've seen a lot of the things in the dreams turn out to um, somewhat come true. So I just want to um, ask you to listen. Um, you can ignore it. That's fine. I would understand. I'm not going to make fancy videos. It's probably just going to be a black screen. I don't have time, and I feel like we're running out of time. So I just wanted to start by saying that if, if I say or do anything that is contrary to God's word, then um, don't listen to me anymore. If um, if any of these can be a blessing to you, that's that's what I'm looking for. And also that many would come to Christ before it's too late. So I wanted to start with this first one because it's kind of short. This was several years ago, <clears throat> probably about three years ago. Um, at the time, we had just gotten three babies into foster care at the same time. The youngest was about four or five months old. At the time of the dream, she was probably six to eight months old. And I dreamed that we were, my husband and I were in bed, and there was a loud jolt of lightning or, um, I, I don't know how to explain it other than like sort of what it sounds like when lightning hits a transformer or something like that. And I reached behind me and, um, sm you know, smacked his arm and said, did you hear that? And he, this was all in, in the dream, but he said, I did do that in real life. And, um, but you know, I was dreaming the whole time. And I jumped up out of the bed. This is all in the dream still. Jumped up out of the bed, ran out the front sliding glass door. That's unlike me. I'm usually like to peek out first and see who it is. But I ran out in the front yard and I called for whoever was in the house saying, come here, come here. I told you it was coming soon. I told you, I told you. And we ran out in the yard and we saw, I saw all these um, balls of light across the highway from our house go up, I don't know, probably a hundred or so go up. And I remembered at that time in the dream thinking, this is like in that movie before the rapture happens, but why am I still here? You know, we were looking at each other like, why are we still here? And about that time, some um, light came under our feet. It lifted up, lifted us up off the ground about maybe a foot. And we just kind of hovered there for a minute. I don't remember anything about that other than we just hovered. And then in just a split second, um, I was at a table, a long wooden table. And it, it was, there was nothing on the table, but there were a lot of people around. I didn't see who the people were. I just knew it was a, a big gathering place. There were a lot of people in there. There was a lot of kind of quiet talking. And across from me, there was a little bridge or opening in the in a balcony or something. This little girl walked up to me and sat down across the table from me. She was wearing a white dress. She had a blue belt around the middle. And she had a ring of flowers in her hair. She had brown brown hair that was straight, kind of almost halfway down, and then curly up toward the bottom, middle to the bottom. And she came to sit in front of me, but um, she kind of had the personality like, mm, I don't really need to talk to you. I'm happy to be here, and I just, I'm happy to just be here. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because it's been three years since then. And this little girl in the dream was about, well, let me finish the dream first. The little, the little girl in the dream was about four to eight years old, I'm going to guess. And like I said, she just had that kind of 
outgoing personality that she liked to be with people, but she didn't necessarily need anybody. And she came to sit down in front of me. And that was it. I woke up. I remember the wood grain in the table. I remember what she looked like. And um, that's it. But it's it was just so more real than even even here. When I woke up from that dream, I could still feel this electrical pulse type thing just going through my whole body, like all this energy. And when I woke up, um, you know, I asked my husband, did I say anything in my sleep or anything? And he said, well, you were, you were beating my arm when you were waking up. <laughs> so, um, but most of it did take place, take place in the dream. Anyway, it's been three years since then. Keep in mind, these kids were from foster care. I did not know what they would look like or anything like that. We had twins that were four, no, 16 months old, and, and this little girl was three months old. Well, now that it's three years later, this little girl in the dream, I mean, the little girl that, we have in, that we've adopted since then, we've adopted all three of them, she looks identical to the girl in the dream. At the time I had the dream, I was thinking maybe it was my granddaughter. Um, but she grew up not to look anything like her. But this little girl that I adopted, her name's Cynthia. And she has, she had no hair at the time of the dream. Ba- barely any hair. She was a baby. And since then, her hair's grown out brown, curly. Um, she does have that personality. She's just boisterous and happy to be everywhere, but... <laughs> doesn't necessarily need anybody to do anything just just let her be herself and she just she is just um she's just so exactly like that dream and another thing too um after I had that dream I was reading the book we had already seen the movie um heaven is for real with Colton Burpo and in that book, I, I was reading it after the dream, I saw where he describes what children are wearing, that they have white with blue um, sashes or or belts or whatever. And also, I don't know if, I don't know what the other kids were dressed like there in this dream. I guess it was heaven. It seemed seemed like it could be a, a formal ceremony or a, a nice dinner or something like that. Um, yeah, so anyway, she, she turned out to look just like that. And the reason I, the reason I share this dream now is just because of, um, John fourteen twenty nine. I have told, I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. What is it that we're supposed to believe? We're supposed to believe John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should have eternal life. And we know that, that he is the only way. John fourteen six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father th- but through me. So the reason I share that dream is because it's something that was shown to me. Then later, um, you know, like I said, this girl is just identical. And um, so that that's it. This is the first one, the first video I've done like this. I wish I could do better. wish I knew how to do nice videos. I just don't have the time. And can't find any quiet so um i hope you'll listen out for more dreams to come because i have (laughs) i have a whole collection that i've been writing down over the last few years and and i need to get them out because um it's just amazing how things are happening and escalating um to the point now where i'm wondering how many of them i'll even i'll even be able to put up but i just i don't want to face him and know that he gave me dreams and I didn't do anything with them. So this is for anyone who wants to listen. And I hope you'll come back and hear more. And thank you.